Okay, in this video, we're going to look at some alternate formulas for calculating the tangential component of acceleration and normal component of acceleration. Um, so I provide these formulas on your unit exam, so I encourage you not to memorize these. If you have a different teacher, you need to ask them whether that you need to memorize these formulas or not. Um, all right, so we, in a previous video, when we were deriving uh, what these two symbols mean, the tangential and normal components of acceleration. We started with the definition of the acceleration vector and did some derivatives and some substitutions and we came up with this expression here. So we did this part in a previous video, um, but in order to think about these alternate formulas, we want to kind of refer back to this. And so the main idea here was that we had taken the acceleration vector and we had rewritten that as a sum of scalar multiples. Right? These, are, these two things in parentheses here are scalars. A sum of scalar multiples of t and n. And the scalar the times the t vector is our a sub t. So from the definition, uh, our a sub t is defined to be this expression here rate of change with respect to time of speed is what these symbols mean. Right? We did the differentiation and substitution that fell out. We call that the tangential component of acceleration because it's the scalar times the unit tangent vector. And then this is the normal component of acceleration, the scalar that's times the normal vector. And so this is speed times rate of change of the unit tangent vector. Okay, so these are formulas that are sometimes useful to calculate the tangential and normal components of acceleration. Um, so occasionally, those might be the most efficient ways to calculate these two uh, quantities, but sometimes, depending on what else you've calculated, uh, there might be easier ways to calculate those. So that's what we want to talk about today is some alternate formulas for that. Um, so some of the formulas come pretty nicely from just thinking about geometrically what this equation is telling us about how the a vector relates to t and n. So I'm just going to draw a possible example of how this picture might look. Um, so I have some acceleration vector. And uh, basically what this says is that I can decompose that acceleration vector into how much of that acceleration vector is long along a unit tangent vector. So I'm calling this my one unit of length and how much of that acceleration vector would be along the unit normal vector. And remember that the unit tangent and unit normal vectors are perpendicular to each other, uh, and so we've got a right triangle here. So some of the formulas for calculating these uh, that you might use come from the fact that we have a right triangle here, and essentially what we're looking for is the scalar uh, that would tell us what we need to multiply this unit tangent vector by to get this distance along here. So remember that AT can be negative depending on uh, how the picture is oriented, but in this picture it would be positive. Um, so this distance across here would be our A sub T, tangential component of acceleration. And then uh, the AN is the scalar that I would need to multiply by N so that when I add those two vectors I get that acceleration vector. So this distance here is the AN. So just understanding what this equation is telling you in terms of the picture can help you think about some of these formulas so that even if you do have to memorize them, they're not hard to memorize. Um, all right, so I'm just going to write down a couple of different formulas here for the tangential and normal component of acceleration. Uh, earlier, we talked about projecting one vector onto another vector, and so you might remember uh, from when we did dot products of vectors and cross products of vectors, uh, we had these two sides of this triangle labeled here uh, with reference to that unit tangent vector. So um, if I'm projecting that acceleration vector onto that unit tangent vector, this side here that's AT uh, would be the scalar component of that projection of A onto T. And so from previously, uh, when we did dot products of vectors, uh, if we take the, this vector, dot, whatever we're projecting onto, and then divide by the magnitude of whatever vector we're projecting onto. So that's just about vector projections. 
Uh, so this works for any vectors. For this one, this equation does simplify a little bit because remember that the tangent vector is a unit vector. So this denominator here is just one, one. So we can simplify this to just a dot t. So depending on what you've already calculated, maybe a dot t is a more efficient way to calculate the tangential component of acceleration than uh, this formula here. So this is another formula, either of these are the same thing, that you might use to calculate that tangential component of acceleration. Um, there are some others. Remember that the unit tangent vector can be written as the velocity vector divided by its magnitude. So remember the velocity vector will be a scalar multiple of that unit tangent vector. Uh, so this, if I just replace the unit tangent vector uh, with the velocity vector divided by its magnitude, I get a dot velocity divided by its magnitude, or you can rearrange that to have a dot v over the magnitude of v. Um, so sometimes this is a straightforward way to calculate that unit tangent vector as well. So that's really just substituting in here. Um, so those are the two formulas I use most often to calculate my unit tangent vector. Uh, sometimes I actually just use the definition because it's not that hard to calculate. For the unit normal vector, um, again, there are several different ways that you might think about calculating that. Um, there one way is to think about that the a dot n is the projection. I'm going to draw this same distance, but on the other side of the triangle here, is the projection of that a vector onto the n vector. And so in the same way that we thought here about vector projection, uh, we could also do that here where I'm projecting the a vector onto the n vector. So I would have a dot n divided by the magnitude of n. Uh, remembering that the magnitude of n is also 1, we can also simplify that to just be a dot n. So that's another formula that you might use. That's just using vector projections here. Um, so I use that one quite often as well. Uh, another thing that you might notice here, I've got a right triangle here. And so Pythagorean theorem gives you a relationship between these sides of this right triangle. So um, you've got a sub t squared plus a sub n squared equals the magnitude of a. Don't need magnitudes here because these are both scalars, but when we're talking about this side, uh, I need the magnitude of that side of the right triangle. So this is really just Pythagorean theorem. I actually use this one a lot to calculate a sub n. a sub t is often pretty straightforward to calculate, even just using the definition. a is often easy to calculate, um, just using the definition of a, and so sometimes I use this uh, to find a sub n. Um, so I believe on your formula sheet that I've provided for this unit, this formula is solved for a sub n. So it's really just Pythagorean theorem, though, and solved for a sub n. Um, another formula that is often useful, and again, it kind of depends on what else you're calculating in the problem, uh, is one that when we did uh, right triangles and cross products and dot products, we also talked about that if I have a vector and an angle here, that this opposite side of that right triangle can be written in terms of a cross product of this vector cross this vector and then divided by the magnitude of this. So I also can write the a sub n as a cross t, magnitude of a cross t, divided by the magnitude of t. Again, the magnitude of t is just 1, so you can write that as just the magnitude of a cross t. Um, but just another kind of variation of that, remember that a um, vector that is a scalar multiple of t is the velocity vector. It might be longer or shorter than I have here on this triangle. But I can do this same geometry using any vector that's here along this unit tangent vector. So this is one our textbook likes to use a lot, a cross v divided by the magnitude of v, sorry, magnitude of a cross v divided by the magnitude of v. That's again using the idea that we used before when we did cross products of vectors on the opposite side of the right triangle here. Um, so all kinds of different formulas here. Uh, there are a couple of others. Um, you can take this definition and you might notice that this definition here 
uh, relates to how that unit tangent vector changes and the magnitude of how the unit tangent vector changes is also related to curvature. You can use a little chain rule substitution and I'm not going to go through all the details of that here because I tend not to use that formula a lot. Um, but if you do a little chain rule substitution here, this magnitude of dt dt can also be written as magnitude of v times curvature. And so if I take uh, magnitude of v times curvature and put that in place of the magnitude of dt dt, and then I've also got magnitude of v here again, so I'll end up with magnitude of v, the quantity squared. So this expression here can also be rewritten like this. I tend not to use this one because curvature is often difficult to calculate. Uh, I tend to either use the definition or uh, this formula. The textbook uses this a lot too. The calculations here are usually pretty straightforward. Um, some of these other ones can be a little messy because remember your unit tangent vector maybe has some radicals in the denominator. Same with your unit normal vector. Um, this one, the calculations tend to be a little bit more straightforward. And then also for the uh, tangential component of acceleration, uh, if I'm going to use this formula for the normal component of acceleration with A's and V's, I might choose one of these formulas here with A's and V's. So I tend to often use just that definition or this formula as well. Also, sometimes if I've calculated one of these, I'll just choose to use Pythagorean theorem to get the other one. So really any of the problems that you're assigned to do in the textbook or your written homework that you're going to be turning in, really you could use any of the formulas and it's just a matter of simplifying your answer until you get the same thing you would get if you used a different formula. But one of the things you want to think about as you prep for the test is efficiency so that you're not getting bogged down in some really messy calculations. Uh, I think these ones that I've circled here and put a box around are probably the ones that you'll find most efficient for most problems. Uh, in getting through the calculations without having kind of a massive amount of um, radicals and things to carry around throughout the problem. All right, we'll look at some examples in the next video where I actually write down a specific uh, vector valued function, position function, and we'll calculate some of these in the next video and then look at on the computer what our answers mean in terms of what's happening with motion along that curve.